Good morning, Coach Slack here once again. Continue our readings on the Synaxarian, the lives of the saints of the Orthodox Church. On this, the ninth day of July, we celebrate the memory of the Holy Higher Martyr Pancratius, Bishop of Dauromina. Saint Pancratius was born in Antioch during the time of the earthly sojourn of our Lord Jesus Christ. His parents, having heard the Lord's miracles and teaching extolled, went with their young son to Jerusalem and were baptized. After their deaths, Pancratius renounced all that bound him to this transitory world and went to the shore of the Black Sea, where he practiced assises in a cave in order to be aware of nothing but himself and God. The holy apostle Peter, passing through the area to proclaim the gospel, encountered the young ascetic and persuaded him to go with him on his travels. Going to Antioch, Pancratius was consecrated bishop for the town of Dauromina in Sicily, along with Marcion, another of, the, another of the apostles' disciples, who had come from Jerusalem and who was ordained for Syracuse. Setting sail for Sicily, St. Pancratius converted the whole crew and also the captain, Lycaonides. They, they arrived in Sicily after a pleasant voyage, and when the saint set foot on the shore, the demons that were in an idol of the god Falcon, to which the people had to offer human sacrifice every year, began to scream with terror. The saint inv invoked the name of the Holy Trinity, raising as a staff the cross he was carrying in his hand, and the demons immediately threw the statue into the sea. Lycaonides, having recounted the miracles worked by Christ and his servants to Boniface, the governor of the city, the latter summoned the bishop, but Pancratius asked that the governor come to him. Boniface fell on his face to the earth when he saw the glory surrounding the saint, and he came to believe in Christ on hearing his preaching. After having been instructed along with his uh, retinue throughout the night, the governor asked Pancratius to go and bless his palace. He was received with great honor and stayed for 40 days, obtaining Boniface's authorization to build a church in the city, the limits of which he traced himself. The building was quickly finished, and at its consecration, all those present could see an awe-inspiring fire descending and illumining the entire church, and... Before the saint had finished celebrating the divine liturgy, all the idols in the city were destroyed. The pagan priest went yelling to the palace and reproached the governor for keeping feast when such a catastrophe had struck the city. Boniface succeeded in containing their agitation and asked what the most learned among them thought to be the reason for the idols falling to pieces. Maybe some other more powerful god has appeared and cast them down to the imprecations of one of the pagan priests, a demon called Lison replied that the god in three persons had rendered them powerless by the incarnation of the sun. Him whom the stranger brought by Lycaonides had come and preached in the city of Diarmina. The idolaters, remaining unmoved by this confession, decided to sacrifice the governor himself as a sign of expiation. Saint Pancratius, warned by a terrified Boniface, spent the whole night in prayer in the church. In the morning, they were preparing to immolate Boniface when Pancratius appeared, clothed in his episcopal vestments, a cross in his hand. Boniface's bonds were loosed at once, and all the pagans present fell to the ground before the radiance that emanated from the holy prelate. Pancratius ordered the idol of Lison to go and throw itself into the sea, and he killed an enormous serpent that was feeding on the blood of the victims. All then cried out, Great is the God of Pancratius. The greater number of them were baptized, and the people who lived on the slopes of Etna imitated them when they saw the healings accomplished by the saint. A temple priestess suffering from leprosy was healed by the saint, but when she uttered blasphemies, she was once again struck by this disease in a more serious form. Repenting, she re received baptism under the name of Benedicta, and I have to after having been ordained deaconess, went and broke up with her own hands the idols that she had formerly served, giving the gold to the poor. As Boniface had to leave on a campaign with a vast army, he had his men blessed by the saint, and a great many of the soldiers, on beholding the divine glory that surrounded him, asked to receive baptism. A cloud from heaven covered the saint during the liturgy that he then celebrated before them, and it disappeared at the moment of the elevation of the holy gifts. Boniface had left a certain Elides to replace him in the city, a callous and debauched pagan who coveted one of the virgins consecrated to God by the saint. 
Through the uh, mediation of a disciple of Montanus, he cast a spell on the young virgin, but it was ineffective. He then had the virgins arrested, and they, remaining inflexible under the pagans' pressure, were beheaded. St. Pancratius buried them in the presence of the people and built a church in their honor. As soon as Boniface returned to Daramina, he had Elides punished and encouraged the building of the churches all over Sicily, where disciples of St. Pancratius made many conversions. Achelinus, king of Calabria, having besieged Daramina at the head of a powerful army, Pancratius urged the people to place their hope in Christ and even sent home the men who were manning the ramparts. He then climbed a promontory, armed with a cross and two icons, and blessed the city in all four directions. The enemy, seeing as it seemed three brilliant suns, fled killing one another. Some of them, however, gave themselves up, and, after having baptized them, the saint sent them to Calabria to preach the good news. During a new campaign of Boniface's, his replacement, Artagorus, invited the bishop to a banquet in the course of which the saint threw down an idol that had been placed there. The pagans then launched themselves on him, threw him to the ground, and beat him so violently that he gave up the ghost. They then threw his body into a crevasse, where he was found by the faithful after anxious searching. Boniface, on his return from the war, punished those guilty, and had a golden sarcophagus made to receive the body of the holy prelate. But St. Pancratius appeared to the disciple and successor Avagari. Avagrius, to ask him to bury in the bare earth him who had always despised gold. During the funeral, his body appeared free of any wound and radiant with glory, and a delightful fragrance spread around it. A church was then built in honor of St. Pancratius, disciple of the apostles and protector of the city. There was an, also an icon during the reading from uh, the monastery of Dionysio on Mount Athos from the 16th century. Through the prayers of thy saints, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Amen.